living amongst fresh bodies of water such as lakes and rainforests all the way to local ponds in the middle of the city. We all know about the likes of our friendly neighborhood frogs. But besides what we already know about their development from tadpoles to adult frogs, like all living beings, the life of a frog starts from the smallest of all beginnings. In their case, it all begins in cleavaging. Three and a half hours since fertilization, the rapid cell division of the zygote occurs immediately, preceding its nucleus formation. A furrow divides the zygote into two, four, eight, sixteen, and so on exponentially. Then, an hour later, the zygote becomes a tiny hollow sphere of cells called a blastula. On its surface, the blastula has two sections. The pigmented part is the animal pole cells, and the unpigmented part is the vegetal pole cells. The animal pole cells divide more frequently, thus increasing in number and appearing smaller as compared to the vegetal pole cells, which are yolk-filled, larger, and less dense during the blastula stage of development. Inside the blastula, there is a cavity called the blastocele located near the animal pole cells. Along with the blastocele, three tissue layers become prevalent in the early embryogenesis. Here, you can see those layers. The endoderm is yellow, the mesoderm is red, and the ectoderm is blue. Gastrulation begins with the entering of some surface animal pole cells. Specifically, the bottle cells at the vegetal poles move their way towards the interior of the blastula. At the same time, the animal pole cells on the opposite side begin to work their way around the yolk and vegetal pole cells. As the process progresses, a dorsal lip is formed because of the continuous movement going on inside the embryo. The dorsal lip, in turn, allows sheets of cells to enter. While this is happening, epiboly occurs, wherein the ectoderm expands, surrounding the surface of the embryo. Gastrulation continues and later on, a new cavity, called the archanteron, is formed, replacing the blastocele as it diminishes over time. Endodermal tissue envelops the archanteron, which will serve as the frog's primitive gut. Fun fact! The endoderm above the archanteron used to be cells located outside the blastula. Furthermore, the archanteron extends outside through the blastopore which becomes the frog's anus in the future. While the ectoderm continues to stretch along the embryo, new bottle cells will emerge and involute into the blastula. These bottle cells will pave the way as more surface cells come after them, which will then create the ventral lip for the blastopore. At the end of gastrulation, the embryo is now enveloped by the ectoderm exterior while at the endoderm, it is surrounded by the interiors and sandwiched in between them is the mesoderm. Each region shall carry out different purposes for the frog. The endoderm shall vessel the digestive and respiratory tracts, accompanied by the production of the skeletal, circulatory, excretory, musculatory, and the majority of the reproductive system to be handled by the mesoderm. Lastly, the ectoderm shall be responsible for the skin, sense organs, and nervous system. In terms of cellular differentiation and organogenesis, scientists are still trying to understand the step-by-step -step process of how the germinal layers eventually develop into different body parts. However, current information best explains the development of organs and organ systems through a tadpole's metamorphosis. Before a tadpole hatches from an egg, it develops a brain through neurulation. Then, it is followed by a tail bud that becomes tail fins, muscles that respond to touch, and gill buds for respiration underwater. Also, early heart begins. These developments occur within 68 hours, and a tadpole finally hatches after 22 more hours. From a tadpole, metamorphosis begins. The external gills generate and is covered by the skin called operculum. Along with this change is the growth of embryonic teeth for feeding. 
A spiracle or air hole eventually forms on the left operculum. This air hole allows water to exit when the tadpole breathes with its internal gills. Hind limbs then appear while forelimbs remain hidden behind the operculum. As the forelimbs emerge, the tadpole becomes a froglet. The froglet grows its lungs as its tail decreases. This froglet will appear on the surface of a pond more often to breathe. Depending on the frog species, full maturation to an adult frog occurs after 3 months to 3 years. Then, the cycle repeats when the frog finds a suitable mate. Truly, we can say that this evolutionary cycle, even for the life of our friendly neighborhood frogs, is part of the miracle of life that is given more depth and meaning through science. Thank you for watching, and check out these references for more information about frog embryology.